Hi, it's Nicole here, and today I'm going to show you a few photo editing tricks that I've learned along the way. I'm using Photoshop Element 7 on Windows Vista, so you may need to alter these instructions depending on what system and program you're using. I'm going to start with a <clears throat> photo of my son, Will. This was taken in an outdoor setting. It's very bright and has a lot of color. It's in clear focus, so it makes it a really good example to show you these techniques. I'm going to start by duplicating the original photo so that I don't mess it up and overwrite the original file. And you go to File and Duplicate, and it automatically names it, in this case, May 056, followed by the word Copy. And I'm actually going to do that twice because I need the third copy a little bit later. I'm going to start by showing you how to sharpen up the eyes. Now this technique is only going to work if the eyes are already in clear focus. It is not going to fix blurry eyes in any way. All it will do is make the eyes pop out a little bit. You're going to start by selecting the lasso tool and then you're going to loosely trace around the eyes making sure to grab the lashes. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now you're going to copy that using Control C. And you're going to come over here and create a new layer. And you are going to paste that copied eye onto the new layer using Control V. Okay, now we want to click on our background photo again and we want to select the other eye. Okay, copy again, control C, paste, control V, and it actually made its own layer for the second eye. So we're going to right click on that and merge down so that both eyes are on the same layer. And we're going to go to filter, other, high path, and you want to set that at a radius of about 5 pixels. Click OK. Now it totally looks like you've messed up, but you didn't. And what you need to do is change the blending mode on those copied eyes to overlay. Okay, and now if you need to, you might want to lower the opacity a little bit because depending on the photo, it might make their eyes a little weird looking. But in this case, they don't look too bad. I'm going to show you the one with the sharpened eyes in your original. It's a very subtle change. It just kind of makes the eyes stand out a bit. And if you like this look, what you would do here is right click, merge visible, and save it. <clears throat> but we are going to delete those eyes because I want to show you the next technique. And this is a really good black and white technique. It's a true black and white as opposed to just a color that has, or as opposed to a photo that has just had the color taken out of it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is what it looks like to desaturate a photo. Control U, and this little box is going to pop up, and you can take out all the color. <clears throat> and this is how I think a lot of people do black and white. But really what it is, is kind of a muddy gray. I'm going to show you a better way to do it. Okay, you're going to go over here and you're going to add an adjustment layer. You're going to choose Gradient Matte. From the drop-down menu, we're going to choose the black and white option. Click OK. Next, you're going to add another adjustment layer and we're going to choose Levels. And with this box, you can choose just how much black and just how much white. So if you want a really overexposed look, you can add a lot of black. Um, the good thing is, is you can see your photo while you're doing it and you can get it just how you it looks good to you, just how you like it. Click OK. Then we're going to add one more adjustment layer to add some brightness and or contrast. In this case, I'm only going to add some brightness. Okay, once you're all finished, you would right-click on any of the layers and 
Smirked Visible. Now let me show you this compared to the desaturated photo. They're very gray. And the black and white technique that I just showed you is actually black and white. Okay, we're going to close that because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to turn this back, edit and undo that, uh, adjust saturation. Okay, next I'm going to show you a technique to really make the colors pop. You're going to start by duplicating this layer. Um, you're going to right click and duplicate. And it names it background copy. You're going to go to filter, blur, and choose Gaussian blur. And you want to adjust this radius up and down to where it's blurry but not so blurry that you can't really see what's in there. See that's too much. This is just about right. See, you can still make out the image of the picture but it's a little blurry. Okay, now you want to change the blending mode on the blurry level on the blurry layer to overlay. You see it really makes the colors pop and it gives it a little bit of a dreamy look. Here's your original and here's using the blur technique I just showed you. Okay, I'm going to delete that blurred level layer and I'm going to show you what you can do with some of your blending modes. I'm going to duplicate this layer twice because I need three in a couple of minutes but I'm going to hide one of them by clicking the little icon here. What you can, there's a lot of blending modes and you can play around with them but a good one would just be to change your top layer to overlay. It's kind of similar to what we just did but a little bit different. You can also change it and try out soft light. Lighten that really looks a lot like the original. You can get all kinds of interesting looks. Now, this one's multiply, and then I'm going to make that one visible again. Try changing that one to screen. That looks really nice together. Um, so, really, you just play around with those blending modes. You can get a lot of really cool looks. I'm going to try this one on hard light. That's a very harsh look, but it may work depending on your photos. Um, that's all I have for you today on photo editing. Um, if you have any questions, um, don't feel free to let me know. Thanks.